welcome to The Conscious Investor. Let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about why reading changes lives and how to choose and finish, most importantly, your very next book. I'm going to give you some bonuses along the way, and I'm going to give you at the very end some opportunities on how to actually bake in accountability so that you finish the books and actually implement and interpret the meaning of the books in your life so that it's not just reading because, oh yeah, I finished a book, but it's reading for the meaning and purpose of reading, right? Reading is such a critical part of our lives. And for me, reading was a struggle. As I was growing up, I was not a strong reader. Um, I didn't enjoy the process because it was tedious for me. And what happened, and I learned as I got older that I'm very much not alone. And this might resonate with you. And that is that as I read, I actually read it aloud in my head. Ed. So when the teachers say, you know, read silently to yourself, well, I literally read silently, but in my head, and it would take me so much longer to read than my peers. I had a, a really good friend and she was a voracious reader, always devouring books, always had a book in her hand. And I was always jealous of her because it seemed like she had this really interesting other world that she got to enjoy and experience. And I felt like an outsider and I wanted to be part of that, but it was so challenging that I never flexed that muscle and developed that muscle. Ironically, I became a a teacher. And as I was, you know, teaching during those early years of my career, I was teaching children how to read. So in first grade, that's primarily where kids are really learning to put all their skills from kindergarten into reading fluently, which means just reading smooth, smoothly, right? And I learned more by teaching kids how to read during those, that period of time. And that allowed me to become a better reader. And it allowed me to finally enjoy reading. Now, I won't lie. I, I did read. I read things like Jurassic Park or Michael Crichton books or, th you know, things like that um, sporadically along the way you know, and because it was content that I really enjoyed, I devoured the books um, because it was written in a way that was just easy to, to read and assimilate into life. But now I want to read with meaning and purpose, right? We get into this point to where we understand as adults the value. And I've noticed that the people that seem to be, you know, taking down their next goal or, you know, just kind of living this full life, those people, when I look at some of the habits and patterns in their lives, reading is an integral part of what they do. And so as we're going through this, we're going to talk about why that is so important and why that is. But I wanted to just give you that backstory on if reading is a challenge for you, if you feel like, oh, I'm such a slow reader, there's you know no way I can read a book or sometimes people start a book and they just don't finish, they lose interest, okay? These are all simply skills that we develop along the way. So don't be discouraged. If that's where you're at, I was there and I have grown into a very voracious reader and I, I tend to devour books now, <laughs> but that wasn't my pattern. That's, you know, growth and progress over the last, you know, 10 years and more specifically over the last three years. So let's go ahead and dive into why, why is reading so powerful in our lives? One of the reasons is that it exposes us to new ideas. Okay, and it informs us of new ways of thinking about things. You know, if we're living in our own little bubble, let's just say, I mean, for during the pandemic, a lot of us experienced um, different facets of this, right? We were no longer out traveling or we weren't going to the same events. We were at home and we had this little bubble world. And when our world is self-contained in a little bubble, our thinking is limited oftentimes to the realm of what is around us and what's surrounding us. And when we engage in reading, 
it takes us outside of that world and it gives us exposure to some new ideas and thinking. And that's critical. It's critical that we are challenging how we are approaching things and, you know, finding more fresh information. So, you know, we're just continually expanding our thinking in our world. Now, if you do me a favor, unless you are driving or on the treadmill, <laughs> <laughs> you're on a stationary bike, you can do this. Um, but you know, if you close your eyes and you think that you, let's just pretend that you're in a bubble or a balloon of sorts, literally you are surrounded by a membrane and it is, you know, pliable. So you can, it flexes as you push your hands on it, it flexes out. Now, if you just stay all curled up inside of there, you're, you're, the, the balloon is just going to stick and cling right to you. But if you push, you can give yourself an air gap and you can create some distance around you and you can continue to push and expand that out. And it gives you more space. Think about that, more ideas, more space. And that also gives you a little more breathing room if you don't mind me saying so, um, because you're able to have that space and, and not have this membrane right on top of you, okay? As you are reading, that is exactly what you are doing. You are expanding your mind and creating something new for yourself. Complementary to that, the second reason this is really critical is it transforms our thinking. So we have this fresh information. We have this, you know, um, new exposure. And now we are thinking about things that we never thought about before. And now we're challenging our thinking or expanding our thinking. These are all very, very critical steps. Each of those steps create these micro changes in our lives. And all of these micro changes create, they, those could also be micro habits. But when we stack those, similar to um, what's suggested in, in atomic habits with habit stack, stacking, when we stack those habits, significant change happens. So as we are reading, as we are, you know, expanding our thinking, expanding our minds and growing our thinking and challenging that, we are also creating some new habits. And they're just these micro one degree adjustments. And each of those is going to end up having a very significant domino effect in how we are responding to the world around us. On a bonus, you know, because we always have to have a bonus. On a bonus note, um, this isn't necessarily always about expanding and challenging our thinking, but when we are reading, we also affirm some of our thinking. And the more we're reading and picking up ideas and, you know, kind of wrestling with these ideas, then we, it's fresh. It's nice to have that opportunity to have those ideas affirmed and to say, oh, well, I was thinking along that line and look, this person is suggesting this as well. This is really helpful for me. We all need, we all need some wins and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And so these opportunities, when we have some of that affirmation as we are reading, it is really, it feels really great. One other bonus is that if you are concerned about content creation, the more you read, you will not have any issue creating more content. As you are reading and stimulating your mind and, you know, engaging new thinking and affirming your old thinking, you are going to have a message to carry to the world. And you're going to have a lot of content that is going to easily transfer in an author authentic way from your mind, from your heart, and out into um, those, those people, your audience that you are trying to reach. Let's shift gears for a moment now, and let's talk about the other part. How do you choose your next best book? Choosing a book is, you know, it, like my kids, they still choose books based off of the cover. And that is why publishers are continually changing the covers of classics. So if you look at, um, let's just say Boxcar, Kid, Boxcar Kids or the Hardy Boys or uh, the Babysitter's Club, I think that's what it was called. If you look at the covers of those now, 20, 30 years later, maybe further longer than, I think there might be even more distance than that. 
the covers now are not the same as they were. So we are adults and we don't want to judge the book by the cover. Um, however, when I was in the Writers Guild, um, Red Buzz Writers Guild, lots of, you know, of my fellow um, members, they were my sisters, they were publishing books through publishers and we would help with the cover. And it was always this very significant decision. They want to make sure, publishers want to make sure that whatever cover is on there, that it is matching what is, you know, out on the market right now so that it's competitive in a visual way. There's a lot of psychology in the book covers. So I want you to really step back and say, this is a marketing strategy. Do not be distracted by the cover of the book, okay? Choose a book and here, it, here are three things or three ways that you can choose your next best book for you because your next best book is going to be different than my next best book. The first step would be, what challenge am I facing? So one way to select a book is to evaluate what are some gaps in my life right now? Where are some challenges that I need some support with, some fresh ideas? Well, I, how I am approaching this is not working out and I need some fresh input. So what can I read that's going to help me grow in this area? That's the first area, first way you might want to choose your book. The next one is um, in a very similar way, but you might identify that you have a skill you need to develop. So you can evaluate very specifically to skills. Right now, I happen to re be reading this book called Profit First with the five-week book in Networking Club. That is not a normal book for me to read. I don't like accounting. I don't care to dive deep into, you know, how to do all these different accounts and this and that. But I recognize that for me to run my business and have the results I want, I need to develop a skill. So when I chose that book, that was a meaning and the reason, reason behind it. And I also know when, as I choose books for the five-week book and networking club, that I am not alone. These books make it beyond the publisher for a reason because there is a need. And so as I choose books I, for the book club, I know that I'm usually not the snowflake, I'm not alone, and it's probably going to serve a lot of people very well. So when you identify a skill that you are wanting to grow and cultivate, it might be, I want to become better um, at virtual selling. I want to become better at communicating with other people in this specific way. It might be like I chose the profit first. I need to become better at these accounting practices. So find that skill and then you can find a book that complements it. Are you enjoying this episode? Do the world a favor and help trip the algorithm by leaving a review so that this content reaches many others. And now back to the show. A third way to choose your very next book is to think, what insights, what do I need further insight into? So I'll go down this rabbit hole for a moment. My son, he is very into um, World War II. And let's just say that you have a particular set topic that you were very interested in. If you're interested in something, then as I was telling my son, you start getting more and more books on that topic. And then you might have a little tangent that you want to go deeper into. So you look at, okay, well, I read Profit First. That was really interesting. I wonder, you know, how I could implement, you know, another practice from that book in a better way. Okay, so you can read books to go deeper into a single topic so that you can really become an expert, or maybe it's just filling in gaps so that you are more confident as you are going through this process. Where are you going to find these books, right? There are so many books out there, but there are great ways, like those are ways to figure out what category or how you're going to hunt, you know, your next best book down. But now you're kind of like, okay, uh, I know I want to read a book on, on how to, you know, uh, copyright for marketing better, but which, which of these, you know, hundreds of books on Amazon should I choose? So here are some ways that you can choose that book. 
the first way would be look around you. When I look around LinkedIn and other professionals um, who are successful, oftentimes they will post, you know, comments with some of their favorite books. You might even put a post out there and say, hey, what are the best books on accounting or on copywriting or whatever it is that you're looking for? And then you can get input from people that way. Finding people who have, you know, and they have personally read the book and it is vetted is my number one way of finding my very next best book. Nearly every book I have read um, over the last two years has been a direct recommendation from someone that I respect. So go to the people that you respect and ask them, hey, what do you recommend? I want to grow in this area. I want to learn about this. What books would you recommend? If you want a quick and easy way of finding a list of great books, you can find lots of great lists out there. And I happen to have a list out over on julieholly.com and it's my best books reading list. I do update the best books reading list, you know, throughout the year, you know, probably, you know, two or three times throughout the year so that it's staying fresh. It's a living active document because I'm reading books and some books that might be on my books. I want to read list. I might read them and they might not actually make it to my list list of books to read. So that's one way that you can find your next best book. I also highly recommend if you are trying to choose between a couple of different books on the exact same topic, I highly recommend reading the reviews on Amazon. Um, reviews are a double-edged sword. I definitely agree with that. But if you are conflicted as to which book to read and, you know, you're trying to decide, I would look at the reviews and, you know, see if there's any insight that would help you further there. So we've spoken about why reading changes lives. We've spoken about how to choose your next, next best book. But how do you finish it? <laughs> a lot of people struggle to finish books. Um, yes, we see some of you know the Olympic readers out there where they're reading a book a week or two books a week and everything. Um, however, more often than not, what I hear from people is, I don't finish a book. One of those elements of not finishing a book um, comes down to, I get bored. So sometimes people will pick up a book and they'll read the first few chapters of the book and they'll say, oh, oh yeah, duh, I already know this. And so they won't finish reading the book. I want to encourage you, if you are one of those readers, please don't dismiss the book and put it down just because you feel like you already know it. That's a great sign and take that as your affirmation. Oh, wow, I know this part. And look, look for the future chapters to bring you deeper insight on that topic, okay? And never take it for granted if you are an expert on something because uh, you can always gain insights from going back to the basics. So be careful in dismissing a book and if you're that reader that picks up a book and doesn't finish it because, well, the first few chapters I already knew everything they were saying, give the author another opportunity to bring out the deeper insights in the later chapters. Another way, if you are struggling to finish books, is to create outside accountability. So you could create this outside accountability while creating content on your social platforms by simply, you know, sharing what you are reading. Maybe you do one post a week or two posts a week, whatever it is, but simply by sharing those insights will, will make you personally accountable to the world. And that amount of accountability is typically enough to keep people um, on their toes and reading. For me, I need a little more accountability than that. And that is how the five-week book and networking club came about. If you recall from previous episodes, I wasn't supposed to have a book club that was a long-standing permanent book club. It didn't even have a name. At the end of 2020, I simply wanted to have invite outside accountability so that I would finish Brandon Burchard's book, High Performance Habits. The book was supposed to be a standalone a la carte. I'm going to get through this one book because 
it wasn't a book I was super excited about reading, but I understood that it would really help me um, reach some of the personal goals that I was aiming for. Um, having that outside accountability was a incredibly, incredibly powerful. So here's my invitation to you. Join the five-week book and networking club. <laughs> We're going to begin our very final book of 2021. We're going to be reading through Brendan Burchard's book, The Charge. And the reason we are reading through a Brendan Burchard book is my, my nod to Brendan Burchard for, um, you know, inadvertently launching the five-week book and networking club at the end of last year. Now, the book club, we're going to be finished before Thanksgiving. So you're not going to tr be trying to read through the holidays and, you know, tackle all the holiday parties and things like that while trying to maintain reading and showing up at the book club. N here's the thing. People who have been in all of the five-week book clubs throughout 2021 will have completed eight books. Now, for some people, they're like, oh, well, whatever, eight books. But I think for the majority of people, if you read eight books this year, that would be more books than you've read in the last two years. That's kind of what I have found with a lot of people. So if that's you, you're not alone. Um, and so by reading eight books, they were people have read for 40 weeks. We do take breaks between. But that is a lot of reading. More importantly, the element of the networking club that I love is that we are ingesting the information, we are interpreting the information together, and we are expanding our thinking even beyond ourself and the book. We're expanding it into, you know, other people's perspectives that is very different from ours. So by doing that, we're getting, we're double downing, basically. We're getting um, our interpretation of the book, our insights into the book, and now we're getting feedback from other people. When you read in community, you are creating another level of engagement. And that level of engagement is what's going to allow you to further implement these things into your life. Now, some things you might read and you might disagree with, but don't take that as, well, I don't agree with that book, so why did I even waste my time? If you didn't agree with something that you read, and I I read books that I don't agree with intentionally to challenge my thinking. And the reason behind that is that it helps solidify, well, why do I think what I think? How is that working in my life? And why is this the best avenue for me to go compared to this over here? So there's never a loss when you are reading. Reading in community definitely is going to expand your understanding of what you are reading and give you further insights that you would otherwise not have. Also going to give you that added accountability that you need. And I'll tell you the five-week book and networking club, it's just one hour a week for five weeks. So five hours. The final way that I nearly forgot to tell you about um, completing books is to really break it down. One of the elements that I found very helpful and effective as I'm preparing books for the um, book club is that I'm just break, doing something my dad taught me. He's, he always said, reduce to the ridiculous, right? So you take the book, you look at how many pages are in the book, and you decide how many days a week do I want to read or can I read? So oftentimes people have habits baked into their week, Monday through Friday. If that's you, then you're going to just say, I'm going to read five days a week. And this book happens to be 200 pages along. I'm going to divide, you know, the 200 pages by the five days a week. And this is how many pages I'm going to get, right? And you're just going to keep reducing it. Oh, wow. So typically the five-week book and networking club typically read somewhere between seven to nine pages. Nine is very rare, but we're reading roughly 35 to 40 pages a week. When I say that, it doesn't sound like very much. When I say, hey, you're only going to read seven pages a day for five days, that sounds even more doable. So give yourself some benchmarks, reduce the book down into the ridiculous, give yourself a timeline, and you're going to find yourself reading consistently. You're going to find yourself enjoying the reading, and you're going to find yourself um, stacking some powerful habits that are going to influence your life in great ways. 
I'm grateful that you joined me for this episode and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until next time, live big, love bigger. Overwhelmed trying to figure out what book you should read next? Head over to juliehollycom and download the best books reading list. I've personally read the books I'm recommending for adults and kids ages eight and older, and you can get a sneak peek even as to the books I'm considering reading next. Download this list and dive into your next best book. Head over to juliehollycom to download the list and dive into your next best book.